Hello good people. Today I'm going to do a build video. It's the first one of these I've done. This build is going to have one goal and that's to build a drone capable of HD recording under 250 grams up here in Canada. Got to go under 250 grams if you want to get around a whole bunch of restrictions and regulations so that's what we're going to do today. I've weighed everything. Hopefully this weighs in under 250 grams. It should be really tight, but I think we can pull it off. So let me run through the components I'm going to be using. High Flight IH3 frame. It's got uh, room for a dual 20x20 20 20 stack. It uh, should be a really nice frame if everything comes together. We'll be using a RXSR receiver. I'm trying to do this to save a little bit of weight, and uh, I don't think this is going to be a long range build anyway with the weight restriction so RXSR should be just fine. The highlight of this build uh, we'll be trying to record in 4K here so we've got the brand new Cadex Tarsier camera with the dual cameras on there pretty sweet. Uh, our flight controller ESC we're using the HDLRC FD445 stack the F4 mini flight controller and a 45 amp 4-in-1 ESC. Uh, something you'll notice about this ESC is it is 20 by 20 mounting pattern but it uh, is actually quite a bit bigger than 20 by 20 at least on the side so this is going to be one of the challenges of this build is figuring out uh, how to best mount this um, so that it will play well with uh, the other stack this might be a challenge. VTX we're using the HGLRC forward VTX using the Foxier Lollipop 2 VTX antenna XT30 connector and finally the motors uh, Emacs RS series RS1606 4000 KV alright so that's the run through of components now let's get to building First part of any build I think is uh, it's a good thing to mount the motors first. Uh, it'll give you some idea of if you have to add wire, where you're going to have to trim wires, that sort of thing. So let's get started with that. We're going to be using thread locker, Loctite, uh, to secure the motors here. Uh, so we don't have to worry about these screws coming loose in flight. You don't want to thread too... Uh, tight with the first screw because you'll want to be able to maneuver the motor around to line it up with the screw. Oh, I lost the screw. Alright, well let's hope we don't need the extra. Try and make that the only one. Now we'll look in there, I don't see any any of these bolts sticking up through so we're good it's one down we'll do the same thing with all four other motors so we got all the motors on nice and snug looks good so what I like to do next is I'll get everything laid out and see how it all fits together and see what problems I might encounter in wiring how I'll have to orient the uh, the ESC is of primary importance here. Um, so first things first, I think we'll try mount this Cadex Tarsier. I think we're going to mount this thing something like this. So we'll have the ribbon cable sort of sticking underneath there. The camera will fit nicely in there it might have a bit poking out so if I have any if I got any weight left over here I'm gonna want to find some way of protecting that see what hardware comes with this thing shoot so this comes with one two three four of these grommets one two three of those I have no idea what this is for. Does this sit over there? Sure it does. Q 
keeps your SD card intact. That is nice. That's a nice thing. I don't know that they intended for anything to be mounted on top of this. This could be a challenge here. There's not a lot of room here to attach anything there. This does thread all the way through, but we'll see how much is poking out the top. Not exactly sure what I'm gonna do here if there's not enough room. Yeah, that doesn't, that's absolutely useless. Not sure what they were thinking here. So they included four of these entirely useless things. Like these, this, this is garbage. Like, am I missing something here? Is this supposed to thread in through the top? And then screw into the bottom? Because if that's the case, no, that's not the case. Of course that's not the case. But there's no, there's no way to screw that on. There's no way to mount this. Okay, thanks Cadex. You're doing God's work. So the next thing I'll do meanwhile while I'm waiting for hardware is we will see how this is going to work. HDLRC has included four of these long things. I like these. I like these long ones. This is great for a, a uh, stack like this. So you're just gonna send this up through the bottom. So how is this gonna work? So we're gonna mount it sort of like this, I think. Um, going like that is not an option, so we have to go side to side. That's totally fine. So that's going to thread through. That's good. So I can kind of see an issue already here. How are we going to wire this? We're going to wire that one over there. These will end up going under and up. Uh, you're a pain in my butt. Come on, you pain in my butt. There we go. One thing I did just notice about this placement here that is giving me some concern. We've got, oh, uh, there is some daylight between this pad here and the rail here. Other side. There is, I like, it's really, really close. I'm going to have to rethink my placement. So I might do ESC in the front uh, with the turtle cam on top. And that would put flight controller VTX in the back. So we'll have to see. Okay, so I've got these bolts transferred over to the front. Let's see how this looks. Now can we mount front to back at the front? Because that would be pretty handy. Oh, of course we can't. No, it's not going to work. And I think even if we got it down there, no, that's... It's not going to work. Okay, so we'll have to go side to side. I just want to see something here. No, that's not going to work. No, it doesn't work. Okay, Cadex Tarsier has to go at the front. This, I can already tell, is going to be a really just a difficult build. Got to take the front end off, slide this down onto the rails and see if we can put the front end back on. It's down there. Now we say a little prayer and see if this will fit. And I think it does with some room to spare, room for clearance. Maybe Cadex was infiltrated by psychics who knew we would need these grommets because we'd be putting it on a long stack like this. Let's find out. Okay. Tarsier on top. Oh my god, it might just work. 
That is just miraculous. So we figured out that part. Great. Great. Fantastic. Fan fucking tastic. We're going to say another little prayer because if it's too tall a stack, then we're just straight fucked. Holy crap, it's going to work. Crisis averted. Next problem. Let's figure out how we're mounting the flight controller. Oh, here's another issue we might run into is this cable here. So this cable is going to go from the ESC to the flight controller. And we're going to have to find a way to make that fit. Okay, you little flight controller that could. I'm going to say with the camera, the way it is, you're going to be wanting to be mounted like this. That looks pretty good. How the hell do I get this over there? Can I go under and through? Probably. That is actually clean as fuck. That is pretty damn slick. Next up on the stack, our VTX. We got this thing to sit on top there. Could just go with this thing sticking out the back. It's not my favorite option, but it is an option. Other option, the one I think I'm gonna go with. Okay, that fits. That fits. She's snug, but she fits. Okay. So, we've figured out a layout for this thing. We still have to figure out where the receiver's going. This is going to be so crammed full of shit. Holy cow. RXSR. She's going to go either down there right on bottom floor I think there's plenty of room down there for her okay so I think we've figured out our layout for this thing let's weigh this thing and see what we are going to be coming in at so let's put this on the scale 178.6 178.7 180.1 Wow, this is a heavy motherfucker, isn't it? 181.6 I think we're I think we're overweight. So without any wire and with the weight of the battery, we're coming in at 258.9 which is overweight for what our goal was. We're looking for 250 grams, so we have to find a way to cut some weight off this thing. We may end up having to run this to save weight. Isn't that interesting? So the difference in weight between... This is 1.5 and... That's where we're gonna have to cut our weight. That's 10 grams difference. Sorry, lollipop. You had to go. Okay, so let's see what this thing's gonna weigh in at now. 70.2 is the weight of the battery. 77.5 plus 70.2. Holy shit. We made it, gang. 247.7. Well, I think it's doable. I would say that's doable. Alright, let's get to wiring. So we got everything disassembled. Uh, I did realize that when I was weighing stuff I forgot this. This weighs a few grams, so... We're going to be pretty tight on weight. We'll probably have to remove these, but we can do that uh, at the end at the final weigh-in. 
So what we're gonna do now is uh, we'll get the motors all soldered up. What I like to do is take some of this flux. We're gonna put a little bit on each pad. We're gonna tin all the pads, including the battery pads. We want a nice fat glob there, that looks good. Just a few quick tips for soldering here for any beginners out there. Number one, you want to start with a good solder, and leaded solder is uh, the easiest solder to use. So get a good leaded solder. A good soldering iron is also uh, pretty useful. Try not to cheap out on this stuff. It'll uh, pay for itself in unbroken parts and unbroken pads. Uh, number two would be use the right tip for the job. Uh, whether it be a thin tip for the small pads or the flat one for the bigger pads, use the right tip for the job. Use a lot of flux when you are soldering. Mm -hmm. Flux just makes everything a lot easier. So solders do have some uh, flux in, in them, but uh, generally it's not enough to make it uh, really smooth and glossy, give you a nice finish and a good soldering joint. Finally, do it in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to be breathing in lead fumes. They are uh, uh, neurotoxins, so don't breathe that stuff in. Next up, I think we're going to do this bad boy. just something I didn't really anticipate which is stupid because I should have please Jesus give me the strength to freaking plug this thing in that'd be good thank you alright alright we're making progress and that's good that's fantastic first thing we're gonna wire up is the camera Do I have to wiggle it, or jiggle it, or jerk it, or, there we go, smush it. It, it. I needed to smush it, that was the key. So we want 5 volt cam ground, it's all right there on the close pads. Ground pad. That is done. So we've still got this to do. Fitting the receiver in there was a big challenge for this build. There's not a lot of room down there and I had to pick larger pegs to make more room at the bottom uh, at least twice before it fit. So we'll go 5 volt ground RX1 TX6. Hey, just wanted to clear this up a little bit. This flight controller has an RC pad for S bus in. So instead of uh, RX1, it should have been wired to the RC pad. 5 volt. Hello. Here we go. Ground. This solder should have been to the RC pad. TX6 for telemetry. At about this time, if I had consulted this diagram up here in the corner, I would have realized that my wiring was incorrect. And you can see the RC pad there, and it wants the telemetry to go to uh, TX1. So this was all rectified later, but at this point, it gets wired incorrectly. There's telemetry. Okay, that's wired up. 
next VTX. This is going on top, and it doesn't have to go far, just right underneath. Where'd my wire go that I was gonna solder? Oh, here it is. It's too late in the day, man. It's really late in the day. As it turns out, it was too late in the day. It was about 2 a.m. at this point. And I ended up fucking this up again. I wired the uh, 5 volt to the VTX when it requires uh, 7 to 24, I believe. So uh, this problem plagued me for a while until I figured out what the fuck up was. Okay, five volt is next. <laughs> I did it. Mom, Dad, I did it. Now it's my bedtime. This just goes to show that you should really do your wiring when you're bright-eyed, not too tired, because these two fuck-ups were easily avoidable, and they took me a long time to figure out what the problem was. It's the next day. We're back. And before we plug this thing into any power, always a good idea to do a continuity test so we're going to test continuity to ground from every pad if it beeps that's a bad thing five volt to ground nothing that's good that's good that's good That makes sense because that's a ground pad as well, so it should all be connected. And I do think that's okay that there's a little bit of uh, conductivity there. So first time we plug it in, smoke stopper. Oh, hey, there's still more soldering to do. We need to get the XT60 soldered on. It pretty much has no room to go anywhere but up the side. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, laying out where I think the wire should go. Um, walking it up, figuring out where to cut it. If you're ever unsure, just cut a little bit long and go from there. This is always a good plan to uh, measure your wire before you cut it. Now is the moment of truth. I'm going to plug this in. Here we go. I see no smoke. I'm happy. Almost ready for the moment of truth here. Almost ready. Almost ready. I have a feeling it's going to be over. We've added these tubes. I don't think the shortening of the wire will be enough. There it is. There it the fuck is. No whammies, no whammies, no whammies. 
that's not possible. 388 grams. No. G. Oh my god! 251.3! Let's just try this again. 251.4. And where's that capacitor? What does this freaking thing weigh? 1.7. 251.5 plus 1.7 is 3.2. So if we take off all the feet, we can have a capacitor. Alright, so while no one was looking, I added a capacitor here. Uh, which was a bit of a pain, had to desolder this, then trim that, solder it up, put that on. But anyway, and uh, a couple strips of Oma Grip, not the best looking job, but whatever. And now, 249.9, literally as close as we can get. So I am pretty psyched about this. Looks like the build was a, uh, was a success. Awesome. So thanks for watching this build video if you watched all the way through. Even if you didn't, if you watched some of it, thanks a lot. Uh, hope you learned something. And uh, stay tuned for Maiden flight video. Because I think, I don't know, these are some beefy motors for 250 grams. And this thing is going to rip. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot. Here we go with footage from the maiden flight. We've got 2.7K 60 frames in the middle and the DVR in the bottom right. As you can see, the DVR is absolutely awful. The FPV feed for this was awful and that's because of the miswiring of the VTX, but it's also because of a quirk with the Cadex Tarsier camera and it has two grounds and you need to ground both of them. I did not know that until after this. Well, this was the maiden flight. Uh, I am going to include after this a flight where the problems with the DVR were fixed and it's a slightly longer flight, more indicative of what an actual maiden flight would be. So here's more of what I would consider an actual maiden flight. Uh, while this is going on, I'll let you take a look. DVR is in the bottom right. Uh, 2.7k in the middle. I'll give you a quick review what I think of the build. So first off this build was uh, quite difficult. Um, every, it was really cramped to get everything in where it had to go. Uh, I would not say this is a beginner friendly build. Uh, especially uh, finding a place for the ESC. Um, we had to make some sacrifices to get under 250 grams. Those being uh, the antenna. Uh, had to get rid of the 3D prints, and uh, the battery of choice, I think, is uh, a little small for the motors I chose. Next up, we'll do the uh, Cadex Tarsier review. Overall, this is a pretty damn good uh, camera. The DVR doesn't really do it justice, because it's sort of glitching out every couple seconds there, but uh, as you can see from the HD footage, the HD is really good. There's no jello. FPV feed is definitely better than the Cadex Turtle, uh, so that's an improvement. And uh, the Wi-Fi connection for setup is actually really good with this thing. Downsides, the included hardware really is awful. I didn't use anything but the grommets that came with it, so you'll have to supply your own hardware. And it seems pretty power hungry, actually. I think it draws quite a bit off the battery, so I think uh, it might need a little bag bigger battery than usual when you're using it. Aside from all that, this build seems pretty good. I haven't found a good uh, motor and prop combo. I think I might have chose a little too beefy motors for the 650 milliamp hour batteries. As a result, I might have to step it up to a bigger battery and that'll put me over 250 grams. These are the things you don't really know until you build it. So overall, I think the build was a success. It was a lot of fun to build. Probably the most difficult build I've done. And I think even if I have to step it up to a slightly larger battery and go over 250 grams, it'll still be a blast to fly. So thanks for watching. Throw me a like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And uh, take it easy. Happy flying.